Hi, this is MXUX. I'm doing a quick a little response to the endurance race results from the San Felipe 250 here. I got a new camera angle. Uh, let's just uh, move on here to the first slide. I just want to show a little footage. This is from Random. Uh, this is uh, at the San Felipe. I think this is a pretty good clip. We're just going to show this. I'm sure you guys have seen many clips on this. And there it is. And there's the truck they said that couldn't be made. They couldn't run the hub motors that wouldn't operate, that were too fragile, the unsprung wheel weight. What else? I don't know. There it goes. Running pretty hard there. Not too bad. All production uh, hubs, motors, battery frame. All right. Some more footage. This is a wreck that occurred on the on the uh, way. All right, let's just get in, get on with this uh, topic here. I want to try to go over a few things and tell you why I think this was a great result for this uh, uh, truck uh, and what, why, how this makes sense. And let me just preface all this by saying, there's never been an EV pickup truck racing before. Nobody knew what to expect. Nobody knew how it would work. Nobody, uh, I um, I just assumed, uh, you know, a lot of variables that weren't easy, that, that weren't assumable. But let me, uh, uh, by way of explanation, I'm going to give you my take on the race. And um, I think the race was a success for the truck. I think it was a proof of concept. I think the truck performed marvelously. Everything they said wouldn't work, worked. Everything they did worked. Um, there were no failures. Nothing caught fire. Nothing broke down. Okay? I don't get it why everybody's so disappointed. I am not disappointed. Let me just, I'm going to talk about range and all the range issues that came up and everything. So let's just get into this. All right. I don't know if you guys know anything about wheel diameter and EV range, but it's a very significant feature. Now, these trucks have to have large diameter tires to run this race because there's obstacles there and they have to have the tire height to get over these 18 inch rocks and other obstacles. I don't know if you've seen any clips from this race. I mean, this is a gnarly course and, um, you just have to have that diameter in order to roll over these big objects. I did as much research as I could on this. I couldn't find the exacts, but according to what everything I see, they got the new desert racing racing BF Goodrich tire on this on this truck. And I would think that the Brethel brothers would outfit it with this uh, with this tire because this is the latest greatest Baja racing tire, and this is an off road. This is a race tire only. It is forty inches in diameter. Okay. The normal endurance tire is 20, so it is twice the diameter. And again, that's to take the punishment to have the uh, the uh, the tire height to get over these big obstacles, and um, and it works also with the the uh, advanced suspension that's in the truck and so forth. Now, let's just talk about uh, wheel diameter real quick here. It affects EV range a lot. Okay, now here's a, here's a quote from uh, Green Car Reports. Wheel diameter can make a big difference using uh, data, blah, 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 test the submissive EA for testing. Fenske, the guy who wrote this article or did this test in Green Car Reports, calculated that the range of a Model 3 performance driven at 75 miles an hour was 40 miles left less with 20-inch uh, wheels than with 18-inch wheels. I'm going to do a back of the napkin on this. I used to be able to do math. I can't. All you eggheads out there, you want to help me out with this? Let me give it a go. Okay. So these tires are 40 inches. The original tires are 20. It's 20 inches taller. So there's a 40 mile loss for each two inches at 75 miles an hour. Okay. So that's. Uh, 20 inch increase divided by two is 10. So 10 times 40 equals a 400 mile loss in range from the tire height alone. 
Could this be possible? That's more than the range of the truck. Uh, no, it's not, because the average speed uh, was below 75 miles an hour. And I don't know what the average speed was, but I am doing back of the napkin here. I am going to estimate the average speed at 35 miles an hour. It might have been less than that. It might be more than that. I think that's reasonable for an average speed on the part of the course they covered. And if you uh, recalibrate that calculation, 35 miles an hour with a tire that's 20 inches larger in diameter, that translates, according to Mr. Fenske here, to a 200 mile loss in range. That would leave the endurance with 40 miles of range. Exactly what it had, okay? Exactly what it had when it recharged. Exactly the course it covered. So you'd need the exact range uh, to uh, uh, put this together and um, some other factors, but I think this goes a long way in explaining uh, the range loss. And I'm going to go over this and a couple other takes on this and, and, and maybe another factor as well here. Let's move on to the next slide. But do you guys get that? Big deal. Tire diameter. Look at the video of the truck. Oh, my God, how big the tires are. Cool. But effect range. All right. Now, the Endurance staged at 9.30 a.m. So it got in line, got in the grid or whatever, however they do it down there in San Felipe. Uh, to start the race, to start. It didn't start till 2.15 p.m., okay? I checked the weather there. The average temperature on that day was probably around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So the truck was sitting for almost five hours. I'm sure in line, I doubt very much if under a tent. You guys are going to have to check this out. I'm, I'm going by what I, I've seen at races, other types of races. You gotta have your car in line in the grid. You take your car out of the grid, then you're not, you don't race. Um, so there's an average 88 degree Fahrenheit temperature for all of you people in Europe, okay? There could have been, if it was in direct sun on, on black pavement, you know, there could have been other things, lack of wind and other things. Anyway, just this ambient temperature, it puts it at the top operating range of most EV batteries. It's not at the tippy top. It's way up there, though. And the question is, you know, did the battery cooling system kick on while it was sitting there? I'm thinking it did. Okay. Now, here's just a quote from Green Car Reports. Again, Green Car Reports. However, it's best to follow manufacturer recommendations of whether to keep an electric car plugged in or not. Many automakers, including Tesla, recommend keeping the car plugged in so a charging station can provide power to run the battery cooling or heating systems. Otherwise, the car will have to draw power from the battery pack to run these systems. So, if it was sitting out there for five hours and the cooling system is cycling, you know, I think, I I am of the opinion this probably happened. Um, and I don't think anybody, I did not think there was going to be a five-hour delay in the start. I mean, I thought that was ridiculous. I mean, I've never heard of it taking that long. I mean, if there's a thunderstorm or whatever, but, you know, lightning and the rain, but, you know, five hours of a delay, that's a long delay. I don't know what that delay was all about. I don't think that's normal. Anyway, if the endurance uh, cooling system was cooling the battery, I think it was, this also would affect range. So let's just move on to the next point. Okay, this is, again, I think you have to get a different perspective on this because you gotta understand this is the first time an electric pickup truck has run the Baja. And as I say here, it's basically, the. What 414 was a trophy truck. 
those Motorhead Bethel brothers, they built a hell of a turkey truck. I'll tell you what, they fucking rocked that thing out, man. It looked great. This stupid phone. They rocked that thing out. It looked great. It's got, uh, it had all the bells and whistles of a trophy truck. It had um, all the uh, uh, accoutrement of a, of a, uh, a trophy truck. And it, and it was a trophy truck. It was a 600 horsepower all wheel drive truck with race suspension, safety cave, and a race body and a cab. Okay? The only thing that wasn't trophy truck about this uh, E414 was the uh, frame, which was factory, the hub motors, which were factory, the controllers for the motors and the controllers for the battery, which were factory, and a stock battery. Now you gotta understand, in, in racing, like a trophy truck is gonna have a, a race engine, it's going to have a 12 speed automatic transmission that's custom built for racing, you know, billet stock machine transmission. Uh, you know, this is a trophy truck run with a stock drivetrain. Okay. And now here's the other thing a trophy truck, and they know that these trucks are going to run hard. And I know they have bigger engines, and you can argue that, but 600 horsepower is 600 horsepower, and you can say, blah, 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 exit, it's going to say it's e-power, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, they know the torque demands on this engine are going to be higher than they would be on the street. I'm talking the regular ICE trophy trucks. They got a gas tank on them anywhere that goes from 75 gallons, and I've seen... Bethel Brothers talking about their builds. When they build a trophy truck, they put a 102-gallon tank on it, gasoline tank on it. And this is a quick tank, quick, uh, quick fill tank because they they actually uh, do fuel it uh, during the stop they make during the race. So you're looking at a trophy truck, the, the E1E, the E14, E1, E414, is a trophy truck, but instead of having a two, two, 102 gallon gas tank on it, it's got, you know, 20 gallon tank in it. The same tank you'd find in a standard pickup truck. You know, nothing special, street truck. So, of course, the range is going to be limited. Now, you, you say if they wanted it to operate and compete, on the same level with the rest of the trophy trucks in the race, and I'm sure they could do this if they wanted to, to have an equivalent amount of fuel on board, because you know the batteries aren't as efficient as uh, energy efficient as gasoline, they'd have to have a battery five times larger. But they didn't want to do that. They wanted to show everyone that the stock battery works and it doesn't catch on fire. And they wanted to show everybody that the stock hub motors work and everything else that stock works and, and can handle this. So, I mean, if you're, if you're complaining about the, the range and the range problems, I think, uh, you know, you, you can't compare it. You've you got to understand, if they wanted to make this a trophy truck and if they wanted to, I'm sure, they could have easily put a five time larger battery in this thing. It's a truck, it's got a frunk, it doesn't have the motor at all uh, that a trophy truck has. It has certainly has the space to put uh, the battery in. It probably could even handle the weight. Um, but um, they decided not to do that because they wanted to prove the stock component understand people even a regular a trophy truck these guys know with the big tires with the demanding terrain with the with the climate with everything else the thing the thing's gonna eat gas like crazy they get one or two miles a gallon whatever the same thing with an electric vehicle these guys knew it but they wanted to prove to everyone i'm sure after that battery fire that hey you know what this truck will run in harsh conditions and without failure. So I hope that made sense to you guys.
it's a trophy truck with a street pickup truck gas tank in it. And even the trophy truck builders, everybody knows the, the, the energy demands of a desert course and desert racing is, is extreme, okay? So um, I hope that made sense to you. I've been trying to explain this in response to comments all day. I don't know. Makes perfect sense to me. And, and as I say, if they wanted to, I am, there's no doubt in my mind they could have made this battery bigger. They had the room. They had the weight capacity. They had everything. They could have done it easily. They just they wanted to run production components. That was the whole purpose of this race, was to run these stock production components to prove that they work and they can take this harsh environment, which they did, they can, they did, and they do. So, anyway. When they come back next year, maybe they'll have a five times bigger battery. And if they do, you better look out. Because I don't know if you noticed how those truck wheels were spinning with that traction control. But when they were off the ground, they weren't turning. Ha! Anyway, look at the video clip again. All right, moving on. Now, here's another thing from a success standpoint. This, this, was, this was the show consumers that these components and these are stock components okay and let me go over it again the frame the hub motors the electronic control system the battery the battery cooling so these are all stock components that you will get when you buy this car this truck just ran 50 actually it was 50 miles with the trip back and so on and so forth 50 miles of the toughest road you will ever see as a consumer i'm talking if you end up i actually did this one time you end up you go you go to a national forest and you make a wrong turn you end up on a fire road and there's no way to turn around and you're all of a sudden you're on the side of the hill and you can't even open up one of the side the the car window doors and the other side's a complete drop off and there you go you got a baja track in front of you that's frightening but you know, if you buy this truck and you get in that situation, guess what? The hub motors aren't going to let you down. The traction control isn't going to let you down. Uh, the battery isn't going to let you down. So this, this proves to consumers that, you know, this, is good. this truck is going to handle the toughest conditions you can throw at it, that, that you're likely ever to see as a consumer. And that's the frame, the motors, the battery, the whole thing harsh temperatures harsh conditions that you know dirt grime i sound like a commercial here but anyway no errors no fires no breakdowns no no component failures nothing perfect so i think you know the truck demonstrated it can handle it okay and and again this is the toughest uh 50 miles of road any consumer is ever going to see. And 50 miles, by the way, it's not a trivial amount of miles to travel under these circumstances with stock components. So, and especially in an EV that's a new production vehicle and a new technology, and to not have any failures and have it to perform flawlessly, give me a break. Okay, so this is the first and only uh, production electric pickup truck in, uh, to race Baja in the world. And I want to give a shout out to the shitbox car. I got Australian fur friends. I know about shitboxes. I've owned them. I love them. I know about the shitbox rally. Bravo shitbox. Anyway, you know, as far as the endurance goes, you know, let, let's talk about racing. You know, it's like boxing. You know, in boxing, anybody can talk. Okay? You can run your mouth. Are you going to get in the ring? Are you going to risk getting knocked out? Huh? You going to man up? Okay, same thing in racing. You got everybody talking. They're talking to talk. There's only one only one truck that did the walk. The, the uh, endurance got up, got on the course, and risked it all. Could have been a total, could have been a fire. Could have been a complete failure. Could have all the drive motors could have failed. Everything could have fallen apart. Could have caught on fire. No. They 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 went in, they manned up, they got on the racetrack. 
okay these other brands you know they want to talk let them talk yeah blah 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 so you can say what you want but the uh, endurance was the first production ev truck to race baja and it qualified it started it ran the course and i think it would have finished with a bigger battery uh because no problem surfaced they ran flawlessly Okay, let's not forget that flawlessly. There were no uh, no problems other than the charging problems, and I've gone over my my explanations for the range issues, and I understand them wanting to test test the battery because they want to show everybody that that stock battery will work. So it was feet complete or whatever the uh, French uh, you French people out there correct me on that. Um, so it was the first original uh, EV pickup truck to run. It's now got the record, okay? Okay, it's got the record of being the first. All right, the other guys, let's see you beat it, okay? And uh, it's a capable all-wheel drive EV pickup. The first to run the Baja. I'll tell you what, the E414 got on the track, manned up, and did the job, okay? All right, now, then, I'll tell you what, the Rivian, I don't know. Rivian weighs 10 tons. Good luck. Uh, the cyber truck well first of all glass roof ain't gonna work so i don't know how they're gonna fit a roll cage to it i'm not so sure they can rework that suspension that airbag suspension i don't know if that'll hold up and the other thing about the uh, cyber truck is it's 20 feet long and 12 feet wide i don't know i might actually be too big to run race but anyway forget about the competition let's talk about the endurance first to race Baja okay and it did it so in my book it's a winner it manned up and I'll tell you what it showed the stock components work and I think anybody now could buy this truck with confidence all they got to do is look at this when people say well those hub motors they do work oh the battery catches fire no it doesn't the truck is capable it's a capable all-wheel drive electric pickup truck, the first ever in production. All right, guys, that's it. Keeping this short, creepy music going to start. Hope you liked the video. I want to shout out to the Stock Hut, uh, Angel Investor, and uh, Blueprints, who also cover uh, Lordstown. Uh, they do a really good job uh, covering this uh, company. So a uh, shout out to Stock Hut, Angel Investor, Blueprints. And I'll put their links in the uh, description. So I uh, hope you guys like this video. I don't know how that music's going to sound. i got to play through the speaker. Should have had it through the headphones. Anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching.